The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Volcanic activity has trapped miners in deep mine shafts in Mount Leon, and Roderick Hero comes to the rescue. Equipping his own crafty inventions, he is the only one who can help the miners before their time runs out. The mine shafts are crawling with all sorts of deadly vermin, making the rescue work a dangerous undertaking for Mr. Hero. Whenever I hear the name Roderick, I automatically think of Monty Python. I just can't help it. Willie's Wadger, he's a wobber and a wapist and a pickpocket. <laughs> Got to love Monty Python. Well, what about Wadawick then? Yeah! Helicopter Emergency Rescue Operation, better known for the acronym HERO, was programmed by John Van Rysen and released in 1984 by Activision. The inspiration came from Van Rysen touring a cave on a weekend trip for the game's cavern setting. He was also a fan of comic book superheroes as a child, specifically Superman, and his ability to shoot solar energy from his eyes, all of which would come into play for the general concept of Hero. Hero is an action platform game where you blast dangerous vermin and blow up walls on your way to rescue trapped miners. You play as this makeshift rescuer, Roderick Hero, equipped with a propeller-powered backpack flying device, some dynamite, and a helmet-mounted laser cannon. Everyone should have one of these in every game. In fact, this concept wasn't far from the realms of the ridiculous with this rejected patent, illustrated in London News on 25th of December 1920, in its inaugural series on the patent office rejects, labelled the helmet with a gun mounted upon it or what I'd simply call the gun hat. Anyway, you descend down the many mineshafts and the trapped miner you are to rescue is found at the bottom level of each stage. And once you rescue a miner, you are taken to the next stage. So your ultimate goal is simply to rescue all the miners. Adding a little to the difficulty is the strict time limit, which forces you to keep moving no matter what. And the further you go, the more hazards you'll meet in the form of difficult environments and how enemies are placed. You'll frequently come across a rock wall blocking your way, which you can shoot or blow up depending on how much time and dynamite you have left. Placing dynamite is done by a simple downward pull of the joystick, but because of this, you will more certainly place a few unintentionally while learning how to play the game. Since your dynamite stock is limited, you need to be mindful of which walls you blow up. Like I mentioned, these caved-in passages can also be shot down with the laser cannon, but this will consume a considerable amount of time. There are also numerous lamps hanging throughout the mines. If you get close to them, they go out, leaving the screen pitch black. Enemies will still be seen though, so you have a fair chance of knowing what's going on even with the lights out. I found that placing a dynamite will light up the screen for a brief moment, so you will have a chance to catch up with the surroundings every time you blow up a wall in the dark. On a brighter note, despite the high difficulty level, the challenges never feel impossible. The game is fun enough to keep you playing for a good while. By today's standards, the game might look a bit shoddy in the graphics department, but trust me, it plays absolutely beautifully. Simple in concept, but remaining incredibly challenging and addictive at the same time. Big thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and do be sure to let me know your experiences with Hero in the comments section. I can imagine that this game will bring back some awesome nostalgic memories, and if you want to follow me on this epic journey, revisiting classic games just like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel and joining me on this trip down memory lane. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, bye for now.